Hello, I'm Dr. Ajay Naik, cardiac electrophysiologist at Sims Hospital, Ahmedabad. I'm an arrhythmia and heart failure management specialist. Heart failure is slightly different from a heart attack. A heart attack is occurs when the blood supply to the heart muscles stops suddenly and patient can get severe chest pain. It could be life threatening. This is in medical parlance called acute myocardial infarction. Heart failure could occur due to a variety of diseases. A person who's had a previous heart attack, in those patients, the muscle of the heart gets damaged and the pumping function goes down. Some people may have valve disease of the heart. In that also, the pumping function of the heart goes down. In some cases, it may be disease of the muscle of the heart called cardiomyopathy. That also can give rise to heart failure. And there are other certain genetic familial diseases which also could give rise to this. How do we investigate and diagnose heart failure? Some of the basic investigations are getting an ECG. That gives us some idea. Getting an echocardiogram, which is sonography of the heart. That gives us an idea of the ejection fraction, the pumping capacity of the heart. When we talk about ejection fraction, the normal EF is between 55 to 65 percent. As it progressively drops, the pumping function reduces. That produces both back pressure changes and inability of the heart to pump blood forward. The back pressure gives rise to fluid congestion in the lungs. A person will get shortness of breath while walking. When they go to sleep in the night, they go to sleep at 10 in the night, they need to wake up at 2 in the morning with cough or breathlessness. Some people may have puffiness of face, some people may get abdominal distension, some people may get swelling over the legs. So all these are associated symptoms of congestive heart failure. Apart from ECG and echocardiogram, in order to diagnose the etiology, the cause, we may need to do a coronary angiogram to see if the person has previous heart attack or there is blockage in the coronary arteries. And if we treat it, the pumping function may improve. Some patients may require cardiac MRI or certain other investigations. In order to address the pro problem of heart failure, the primary form of treatment is restrict the fluids. Because the heart is not able to pump well, if you overload the body with fluids, the same syndrome can get worsened. So restrict the, restricting the amount of oral fluid, so 1 to 1.5 liters per day, will help mitigate the problem. You have to avoid salty food, avoid pickles, papad, avoid adding table salt. Restrict the amount of salt which is used in food to the amount which is used while preparing the food. Do not add salt while eating. Apart from restricting the fluids and restricting salt, it is important that you take medications properly and the, your doctor would be able to advise you what kind of medications to take. These are various medications which increase urine output that helps get rid of the body of excess fluid. It may help improve the pumping function of the heart. There are certain medications which have been introduced over the last few years which have remarkably changed the way heart failure is being treated nowadays. Apart from medications, it is also important that a person exercises, does yoga, but those have to be supervised and gradually increased over a period of time. There are certain treatment which are specific, like implantation of certain devices which may improve the pumping function in some patients. But these need to be diagnosed initially by your ECG, echo, angiogram, and that would guide whether a person is suitable for implantation of, the, of a device. One of the devices which is used is called cardiac resynchronization therapy. It's CRT. And this is slightly bigger than a pacemaker. A pacemaker is this, and this is CRT. This has place for three leads which go inside the heart and the CRT is implanted under the collar bone and under local anesthesia. The procedure lasts around two, two and a half hours and typically the patient needs to be in the hospital for two to three days. 
in some patients this might be a form of therapy in some patients a bigger device needs to be implanted which is called a crt defibrillator it not only improves the pumping function of the heart but also protects the patient against sudden death due to abnormal fast heart rate called ventricular arrhythmias in some patients uh, the crt has been able to almost normalize the pumping function of the heart to 50 55 and 60% and they lead a normal life but in the vast majority more than 80% of the patients the pumping function can increase by 15 to 20% so if the pumping function goes up from 20% to say 35% it will relieve the patient symptoms and patient is able to carry out the activities of daily living and able to rejoin work it has made a big difference to patient's life this is a remarkable therapy which has been introduced about a couple of decades ago and that has changed the way we treat heart failure certain diseases are progressive and will inexorably worsen over a period of time in these patients we may need to evaluate them for heart transplant or ventricular assist device implantation these are decisions which have to be taken by a team of doctors so if you or any of your significant others are suffering from heart problems suffering from symptoms suggestive of heart failure it is very important that you remain in constant touch with your doctor and get guided in the form of newer forms of medicines newer forms of devices and if necessary further interventions in the form of heart transplant or ventricular assist devices heart failure is a complex syndrome and it has to be managed individualized therapy needs to be given and the patients would generally do well this is dr ajay nai cardiac electrophysiologist at sims hospital ahmedabad in this arrhythmia and heart failure series in the future segments also we will deal with more such problems and their treatment and management thank you